Hi everyone, today uh, I would like to show you how we can create uh, together a web app, a Flask web app using uh, ChatGPT as uh, our coding assistant. And before we dive into um, uh, the code of a, of a very simple web app, I would like to show you the web app that I created uh, using the power of uh, ChatGPT as my personal coding assistant. So I call it the AI Jingle Maker, which you can find at AIJingleMaker.com. It's a simple web app. I mean, quite sophisticated in the background, but simple to use, uh, which you can uh, use to create your own um, radio jingles, uh, DJ drops, uh, sweepers, uh, podcast intros, etc. So you can go on uh, AIJingleMaker.com and test it yourself. And if you follow the advice that I will give you in this video, we will start with a, a very simple web app. At some point, you will be able also to create uh, this type of a uh, more sophisticated web app uh, using ChatGPT. So the web app that we will create together today will look like this. So you will tell me it's just a form, it's just a web form. Yes, but that's not that easy to create, uh, especially if you want to have uh, an admin uh, for the backend to uh, have a look at the data that you collect. So if we go to the admin, you see that I have an admin uh, where I will have all uh, the emails collected by the app and I can easily add an export button to this admin to export uh, the content uh, as a CSV file. So we will create all of this together. We will uh, start uh, with, a, with a blank canvas, with a blank page, and we will just have a little conversation with ChatGPT to generate all the code. So um, I can say that I won't uh, write a single line of code in this demo. All the code will be written by ChatGPT, just following a few, uh, a few prompts. There might be some mistakes, some errors, some bugs along the way, and we will fix them uh, together with ChatGPT. So let me minimize this uh, video first and go to uh, the environment where we will code uh, the app. So we will use uh, Replit. Replit in, is an amazing piece of software, uh, an amazing cloud-based IDE. Uh, so that's a place where you can uh, uh, write your code and also deploy your apps. Uh, you can start for free on replit.com. Uh, so just go there and create what we call a REPL. A REPL is a workspace uh, on Replit. So we will start by creating a REPL here. And we will choose Python because um, Flask is a micro uh, web framework uh, for Python. So if you know how to code uh, in Python, which is uh, usually pretty straightforward, you will uh, very easily know how to uh, create a web app using Flask. So we will just give it a name uh, like uh, today's demo. And we will keep it private. You can also uh, switch to public if you want to share uh, your um, creation with the world. And the cool thing with Replit is that even if you are in private mode, you can privately invite your coworkers or uh, some users to test the app uh, before you release it and before you even deploy it uh, using, uh, using Replit. So let's create uh, this uh, REPL. So by default, it will obviously be completely empty. There will be a, a root file called main.py, main.python. Uh, so it's a Python file. It's completely empty at the moment. And uh, if we want to create a, a Flask web app, we need to give it a, a specific structure. So we need to add two folders. The first folder uh, we need uh, to add here at the root of the project is uh, the templates folder. Uh, it's important to call it templates and not template. And then we will add a first uh, HTML file there. So we will call it index.html, like this. Later, we will also add the admin.html. And we will also add another template, uh, another, sorry, folder at the root uh, of, the, of the project. So to go back to the root, you just click on main.py. And we add another folder called static, like this. And in this folder, we can add, for instance, some images or, or some other files like uh, the CSS file or the GS, the JavaScript file. So we will just add 
a CSS file, styles.css, which we will use in a moment. So we have main.py, we have the index.html, and we have styles.css. So now we're ready to go, but it's still empty. So we need to fill it out with some code. And that's uh, what we're going to do together with our friend, our dear friend, ChatGPT. So as you can see, I'm a ChatGPT Plus subscriber, so I can use GPT-4, but you can also use GPT-3.5 for a Flask web app, it will work. Uh, and uh, yeah, that would be uh, pretty easy also to do in GPT-3.5. But let's use GPT-4. And uh, I rehearsed a bit uh, this demo uh, beforehand, so uh, I prepared a few, uh, a few prompts. So we will start with a prompt. Um, asking uh, ChatGPT to give us the boilerplate of a Flask web app, so the starting point of a Flask web app, um, the, the skeleton of the app, uh, with one page, index.html, that we need to render, and a form with two fields. If you remember, we had two fields here, so let's go back here, the name field and the email uh, field. And we want to store the data in, uh, in an SQLite database uh, using SQLite 3, which is a, a package uh, inside uh, of Python. And uh, we will also have to tell ChatGPT to bear in mind that we're using Replit. So we need a, a specific uh, type of structure uh, at the end of, uh, of the main.py file. So I have my prompt uh, ready with everything that I've just told you. And I will just copy it from another screen and come back to ChatGPT. So we will see in real time what ChatGPT will do. And I will just adapt it here because um, I would just want to give it a specific name to the database, database.db. Okay, so let's just hit enter and let's see what ChatGPT uh, comes with. So as you can see, uh, ChatGPT uh, also suggested the same kind of structure that we implemented together. So the templates folder with the index.html inside of it. And uh, the database.db, we don't have to create it um, before uh, starting this code because it will be uh, created uh, by um, by the code right here, okay? Uh, and um, and also the table, the first table inside of the, the database, so the, the user's table will be uh, created by the code when it will be first initiated. And the code that we have here also contains two lines of import, so we will have to use the Flask package and a few modules from Flask, probably uh, some other modules uh, later on. We also import SQLite 3 for the, the database uh, management. Then we will initiate the database, create the table, and then uh, we will have the first route. So this route, uh, which can be accessed via GET or POST queries, is the route for the index page. So as you can see in the end, we render the HTML template index.html. So on this page, we will have the two fields for the form, name and e email. So when we retrieve the data, when it's a post query, we retrieve the name, we retrieve the email. And then what we do is insert the data inside of the table and we show a message saying um, that. Uh, uh, that uh, we have uh, stored the data in the dat database. And this is a surprise. We also have some kind of a, uh, a warning if uh, the email already exists in the database. And then we have the template, the, the starting point, at least for um, our uh, index.html page. So, and then uh, a bunch of instructions here. So let's, uh, let's copy this code and paste it inside of main.py like this. So we cannot run the code now because we don't have uh, populated the index.html. So we need to go back to uh, ChatGPT and copy the index.html code and come back here and just paste it. So now we're good to go and uh, just press run. So the first uh, thing that will happen is that um, Replit will um, install the, the packages that are required uh, right here to run this code. And then, voila, it opens the page, which is bare bone, pretty simple and pretty ugly at the moment, with the name and the email field and the submit button. So if I type an, a name and an email and submit, it will already 
um, insert the data inside the database because you see here uh, on the side that we have the database.db which has been created by uh, the Flask uh, application. But we don't have any admin to look at the data. So the second thing that I will ask my dear friend ChatGPT to do is to uh, give me uh, an, uh, an admin page. So so now just just talk to it like you would talk to a friend or coworker. So now I need some code for an admin dot HTML page which will display the data stored in database.db with a back button to the um, index page. And also, uh, we'll do it straight away. Uh, I had uh, actually um, thought about doing it later in uh, the session, but do it, we'll do it straight away. And also, an export button to export the content of the table as a CSV file. So I need um, the Flask routes because we need other routes in the Flask um, in the Flask application to handle the admin page and also to handle the export uh, as CSV. So I need the Flask routes and the uh, the HTML code for admin.html. Okay, boom. So we hit enter. And this thing understands straight away what it has to do. So um, as you can see, we have to import a new, um, a new package, CSV. Uh, so we first do that here at the top for the imports. And I think that Probably we also need some other stuff uh, from Flask because we need res response here. So the easiest thing to do maybe is just copy, paste, you know, just replace the old import section. So you see here, here we have a response which we will use for uh, uh, the, uh, the CSV download. And then we have uh, the app route uh, for uh, the admin page. That's perfect. So let's let's just put this here before the end. Okay, that's just the closing here of the Flask application. Uh, it actually runs uh, the application on the port uh, 8080 in Replit. So that's why actually I I asked ChatGPT to give me a code which was adapted to Replit. Otherwise, I could have had a default code which uh, can run locally on another port, but uh, Replit uh, uses this one. So okay, so that's why we had this uh, uh, this little comment here uh, from uh, ChatGPT. And we have another route, uh, which doesn't really lead to a page, uh, but uh, it's a function uh, to export uh, the data as a CSV. So we would just do this. And uh, yeah, we can paste it here. Okay. So bear in mind, uh, as I told you uh, earlier, that there, there might be some missing stuff at some point. So when we will run the code, who knows, there might be uh, some issues, something uh, uh, that will break. But obviously, we can uh, also use ChatGPT to debug this stuff because ChatGPT also makes mistakes uh, from time to time. And we have the admin page. So let's go and create the admin page in the template. So we have the templates folder and we need to have another file there called admin.html. So now we're ready. Okay. Uh, just to tell you, we are approximately halfway or even a bit further in this project. So it was quite fast. Let's, um, let's paste this. Okay, so now I can rerun all of this. And just to uh, give you a bit of uh, explanation about what's happening here uh, in those windows. So here you can see in the console that uh, uh, the code is running. Uh, oops, sorry for that. Um, nothing, nothing special, just, you know, uh, 200 uh, uh, responses. So everything is working fine. And we have here, our uh, form bare bones still we, we had some styling in a moment 
and uh, I can also open it here. So I can just go there, if you see it, open in a new tab. And so we open it in a new tab. That's actually what I did with the example that I gave you earlier. And so if I type a name uh, like max and max at mail.com, and if I submit it, uh, it says data successfully stored. I don't know why ChatGPT uh, puts uh, the um, the confirmation uh, on top of the form. Could have been uh, under the form, but you know we could just change it very easily by just going here in the HTML uh, file and just taking this um, this uh, piece of uh, of code and just putting it after the form, just to show you even before moving to the CSS, what it gives. So if you uh, change the HTML, you have to rerun. If you change the CSS, it's okay. You can just uh, reload the page. So let's rerun. Okay, so let's do it again. Uh, just put another one there. So fred at mail.com. And we submit it. And now we see, okay, the confirmation is under the submit, which is usually what you would expect. And if I go to admin, I have uh, my table, as you can see, with the two uh, entries, Max and Fred. I can come back to the index and I can theoretically, theoretically export as a CSV. So let's see if it works. And there was a server error. So I was kind of expecting that. So let's see, um, let's see what we have here in the, in the errors. Okay. So that's the that's the error uh, bit so what we're going to do is just go to chat gpt it's it's a good opportunity to show you actually uh, debugging and we just um, say i have an error when i try to export the table maybe i forgot something Okay, we need to create a CSV content first and then return it as a response. Let's change the approach, make sure you have everything. And yes, we need another package in main.py first. Okay, let's put it there. Boom. And uh, sorry, that was the error. So here, and we will change the route uh, for the export. So we come back here and we have this route that it gave us for the export and we will just remove it change it and run it again might still be another bug but uh, our friend chat gpt will then help us uh, debug it so let's uh, do it again so let's open this and go to the admin and we still have the two entries that we had and we can export the csv and, and see what happens and now we have the csv so now if i uh, save my csv it's called data okay and I just um, open this CSV and I will show you that we have the content of the CSV here. So the content of the table. So everything is working. Okay, so we are 18 minutes uh, in this live tutorial. Uh, we will now try to skin all of this and give it a, a nice look. Okay, so let's say everything is working let's move now to some styling i want to use uh, material design uh, to uh, to give a fresh look to both um, index.html and admin.html uh, please refactor the code for me okay refactor meaning uh, please uh, modify the code for me so material design it's a uh, it's a css uh, framework uh, designed by uh, by google it's pretty nice uh, very good looking that's the the one that i used in my example that i showed you in the beginning so you see it handles the forms like that the buttons are very nice uh, the admin and we didn't even have the button here for uh, the export but it also looks very nice so we will just uh, see how we can revamp this app using material design so let's uh, refactor the code certainly 
Using material design can significantly improve the look and feel of a web application. So ChatGPT always agrees with you. That's a cool part about ChatGPT. Uh, it's, never anno- it's never annoyed by your comments, uh, even if you tend to shout a bit to ChatGPT, because sometimes things go wrong. It goes into a loop like that, so you have to chat a bit with it. So index.html uh, will be revamped and uh, also admin.html. So a few comments before we copy-paste it. So what we do is actually we import here um, the CSS for material design. Okay, that's this line. And we also import some uh, JavaScript there. Uh, I mean, we use some JavaScript there from material design. So before the the, the closing tag, the, the closing of the body tag, sorry. And that's the same for admin.html. So we import the CSS there. Um, and here we have uh, the JavaScript. Okay, so we don't even use any extra CSS, but we'll have a look in a moment uh, to see how we can also use our own style CSS to just, you know, go further because there might be some stuff, some headlines too big or something like that. So let's go and uh, change the index.html. Uh, yeah, it still remembers the way it did it. So with the, the confirmation on top, but let's see how we do that. So index.html. Okay, we just remove everything and we just paste the new one. And first thing first, I would just move this guy there and put it under the form. Okay, and the other one, it's uh, the admin.html, this one. Okay, so let's do this. And as I told you, because we modified the HTML, we will just rerun the whole thing. Let's go. Boom. And we have a nice form now. See, it's like magic. Uh, Let's uh, open this. Okay, so it's a bit too wide, but uh, we can change this in a moment. So now if I do um, Elise, Elise.mail.com, and I just submit it. I'm just wondering how the confirmation will appear. Okay, it's not super cool, the confirmation. We can obviously modify that, uh, the way it looks. Uh, I mean, you don't want a red uh, background um, for, uh, for a confirmation message, but that's something we can easily modify. And if we go to uh, the admin, now we have a, a pretty cool admin. I mean, the admin is, is really cool. So we have the export button there, same function as before. So we can export the data. We can come back to the index. So I would say admin covered. Just a little bit of work to do on the user form. Uh, maybe first change the, the, the title of this. So that's our previous example. Um, what did we write uh, in my first example? Ah, yes, sign up to our newsletter. So let's. Uh, first, yeah, here, find the title. So sign up to our newsletter. That would be better. And uh, yeah, so here we have uh, UL class, red, uh, blah, blah, blah. So probably if we change this in green, that would be better. Um, And uh, yes, we could also have... uh, call it confirmation. So now here we need to add our own uh, styling CSS if we want to add other classes like this confirmation, which is not uh, directly supported by uh, material design. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to link our um, styles of CSS to uh, the, um, the index.html. So in the head section where we have this um, um, this material design line, we can add another one, which is linked to style.css, which is in the static folder. Okay. So now if I go to, uh, my, uh, styles.css and I just put a class called confirmation and I will just, uh, open curly brackets and I will say, for instance, padding, uh, 10 pixel. That's what I wanted to try. Now, if I rerun everything, so first of all, if it's dangerous here, it's not dangerous, just go there, uh, say that that the site is legitimate and the padlock will turn to black, it's perfect. So let's reload this and say, for instance, 
Um, testing, testing at mail.com. We submit it. And now, as you can see, we have a nice padding around the, the confirmation. And if I reload it, obviously, the confirmation will disappear. And if I go to the admin, I have all of my tests in the admin and I can export my CSV and I come back to the index. So there's maybe one thing left here is that you don't want the admin to be just accessible at slash admin to anyone. So you want a, a password uh, for this admin. So we go to um, our friend chat GPT and say, okay, one last thing. I would like uh, to restrict... Uh, access uh, to um, the admin page via a simple uh, password. And um, I already used a, a method uh, for that, um, which was uh, using a method called uh, um, Flask uh, HTTP host. So I will just uh, ask uh, ChatGPT to do it again with that. One last thing I would like to restrict the access to the admin page using this. So, ChatGPT will give us the code. So first of all, we need to import the package. So we will just do this at the top of our main.py, PY, sorry, like this. And this is just to activate it. And then we will have um, a function to uh, verify uh, this uh, this password. So yeah, we, we just have a bunch of comments there, but let's just grab what's uh, useful for us. So let's just go there and just put this at the top before the route, before the DB initialization. So you don't need, obviously, uh, all of those comments, but it's nice to document your code. It's uh, offered, kindly offered by ChatGPT. And uh, here we have your password. We'll just change it to my pass123, very bad password, but just for the sake of the demo. And we need to add uh, some uh, decoration, as it's called by, um, by Flask, uh, between the app route declaration and the uh, the admin. We have some suggestion uh, from Replit, but is it what we need now? Apparently, yes. So this is it. Um, and uh, so let's come back here and add this line. Okay, so we need to be authenticated to access the admin page. And we have a last bit here, which is, um, Yes, just a customization of the error message if there is an uh, error. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's just also copy paste this at the top before the routes. This handler. Here we go. So now we just reload everything. Boom! 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 It will install the um, the Flask HTTP out uh, module, and uh, we can um, come back to where we were here. And let's go to the admin, or try to go to the admin. And boom, we have um, we have a pop up. So we just put admin because I think it was admin, and my pass one two three. Sign in, boom, now we are signed in and we can also save the password. So now we are signed in to the admin. So it's protected by, by a password. So everything is there. So you can still customize further the style. So if you want your, your, your title to be uh, a bit smaller because it's kind of you know big, uh, you can also make it smaller. Um, I think uh, it was an H2. Um, let me let me see. It's uh, no, it was not even an H2. It was uh, it was an H3. But it's better, you know, for the main title of a page to be an H1. So we make it an H1. But if we reload it, it would probably be massive. Uh, probably, yeah, it's massive be because it's an H1. So what we can do very easily in the styles, we can just say, okay, it's an H1. Uh, headline. We just open the curly bracket and we say font size uh, and we just say 2EM for instance. And now 
so I haven't changed um, uh, the HTML, so I can probably just reload, yeah, reload the, the page. So now we have something which is uh, much more decent. You can obviously you can add your little emoji there, uh, as I did in my first example. But you get the idea. So uh, let's uh, recap. We have the main.py uh, file with all uh, the Python code for uh, the Flask app. Um, properly configured to work here on Replit on the port 8080. We have inside of this a route for uh, the index page with both a get and a post uh, query approach. So post uh, when we uh, when we fill out the form and get to just open the page. We have the initialization of the DB. So we created the DB. We created the table if it didn't exist, and then um, we just use the table. We have the app route with the login required for the admin, and we have also the route for the export. Um, CSV button that we have in the admin. So everything is there, everything is ready. So if you just use this code that I will share uh, in the comments below, you can just clone it and you can just have your beautiful little form here. You could add some other fields, obviously, to the form. So you can add some other input fields, F3, 4, 5 fields. You could even add, using material design, a selector with a drop down. And then you just modify what you fetch in terms of uh, data here uh, from the form to populate uh, the database. Obviously, then you would need to restart this and create new fields in your SQLite 3 database. But you get the point. So it's modular and it's the boilerplate, the starting point of a, of a Flask web app, which was created... Um, I would say in a few minutes because uh, it was longer uh, because I was explaining everything uh, while doing it, but it maybe took 15 minutes to create uh, the app itself using uh, ChatGPT, uh, a very simple conversation. I will also share uh, in the comments below the conversation I had with uh, ChatGPT. So that way you understand the, the concept uh, of the prompt and you can replicate this and create your own, uh, your own applications. So I would be happy also uh, to see uh, the applications that you will create uh, using uh, ChatGPT uh, and, uh, and Replit. So if you uh, create your own applications, share them uh, in the comments below. Uh, obviously, give a like to this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you want any specific tutorial to create any kind of web app using Flask with ChatGPT, just let me know and I will uh, do it uh, in uh, one of the videos that I will create in the future.